Nia Nia everyone, this is Thermite, and this is Battle Angel Alita, Last Order, Volume 12. So, uh, Alita has been rebirthed from, uh, what was it called again? Ah, uh, Tunguska, the final form of the Jovian Union's, like, big, powerful super mech. Which, hmm, I'm really interested to see how this happens. First of all, like, how did her chip, like, how did the scrapyard, or like, you know, the, um... The Scrapyard 2.0, I guess I could say, like the robot only Scrapyard. How did it manage to reconstitute her? And then from there, how did she get into this machine? Because I doubt that it like they reformed her using Tunguska itself. Like, I could imagine them doing that with Anomaly because Anomaly was like, you know, it was gray goo. It was just a ton of nanomachines. But with Tunguska, like, or what did they call it again? It was Warman something. Ah, Warman 609, that was it. Yeah, like, it seems very solid. Like, it is modular, it can transform. But, hmm, I, I guess we'll just see. We'll see as we go forward. Right, Reconstruct reconstructing your body from scratch is far beyond the capabilities of the brain biochip. He was able to do it with her brain at the very start of Last Order, because, I mean, that's Karmatronics for you. But does her, does her brain biochip have Karmatronic potential? Hmm... Once again to the world of combats. Unknown nanomachine attacking via hyperspace. Hmm. Is this the scrapyard? Like, what could this possibly be? Right? Starting off right with the, uh, the name of the, of the chapter, I returned once again to the world of combats. Ah, oh, this, new, this new outfit of hers, or like new body, I should say. It's looking real cool. Come on, we need a full shot of her. Yes, yes. Ah. Uh. Wait, what? She's got a tail? Oh my god. Just when I thought I couldn't love Alita anymore. I've, I've been a big fan of, like, in general, I really like cats, as you can tell from my channel name. But, oh man, she's got a cat, she's got a cat tail now. She doesn't have ears, but I mean, she's got the tail. She's closer to Galley the cat, or Alita the cat. Oh man. Hmm, and she looks so calm is the thing. Like, whatever happened? If I came back from the brink of death, I think I'd be pretty freaked out. But it seems like she found some sort of enlightenment almost. Like, or not enlightenment, but at the very least, she, like she's at peace with herself, which is a far cry from where we last saw her. The first civilian team to win the semifinals. Yep, the judges must have been thrown into confusion by the lasers. Ah, uh, box cat, no. Don't do cruel things to box cats. Due to serious concerns over public safety, the 10th Zot is hereby cancelled. Nope. There's gotta be an outcry for this. There's no way. This is not allowed. Because I get why. It's because the civilian team's never gotten to the finals. It's always been uh, the Jupiter Union versus... Uh, was it the Venusians? It was one of the others. And then they've always... Like, one of them has always thrown the match. It's always been like, yeah, whatever. It's always been rigged, so that way they never have to make a new commonwealth. But, uh, they need to force it to happen now. Like, and even there, it doesn't mean that everyone will accept it. I definitely believe that, like, if they manage to make the surface of the Earth a commonwealth, it's going to be very controversial, they're going to be attacked, and that's all fine, but they need to allow it to happen. That's just fair. By the way, I did the thing where I, that I always do, where I click on this to, so that you can see at a glance what volume I'm on, which is kind of pointless because that's also what my title of my chapter or the, the title of the video is meant for. But I didn't look at this. Okay, okay, so it's her new design, and she's just sort of posing here in the Zotarina, I suppose. I don't recognize this. Like, is this a ship or is this combatants? There are very few series I've ever read where I could say genuinely that, like, not as a joke. Is that a ship or is that a combatants? Uh, yeah, why didn't they evacuate when the Chovian monster attacked? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We paid Zot Insurance to see this thing, we want to watch it all. The Space Angels' victory should be announced. That's true, that's actually very true. Like, at the very least, they need to, like, say that the Space, the space Angels got to the finals. Let alone allowing the finals to happen. Mm-hmm. Also, oh my god, he's so serious! 
Like, I expected Jack to be a little peeved, but I love that both of them are just outraged by this. Like, oh, these two are so good. They're so good. Okay, so they were ships, not combatants on the cover. All right, so while they can't see anything, are they going to execute the Space Angels? You're under arrest, charged with being a menace to inter interplanetary public safety. Oh? Hmm. You've finally shown your true colors. Mbadi can't, like, you know, slyly walk his way out of this one, right? Some sort of Imaginos 2.0, as it were. Ooh. And yeah, I can definitely uh, understand that. Like, the entire theory of carbon mechanics, I assume, ba was based around the idea of the human brain. That's why, even though her brain was artificial, like, thoroughly artificial, it was still a human brain. It still worked under the theory of karmatronics. But if you can do that, if you can reconstitute an entire body using just the power of the brain biochip, that says a lot more about the nature of what a human is. Also, I do, I do like how more extreme Supernova is compared to normal Nova. Like, it would be very easy to just say, okay, so because he's got two chips in now, this is the evil Nova. But they've been doing a good job of making him feel more extreme than usual Nova. Or, like, more extreme in a negative way. Hmm. No, I, I don't think Zex can win a, a, a hacking competition. There's no way. <laughs> I like him a lot, but I cannot imagine him winning against a hacking attack. Uh, are, is, is his body going to get shut down somehow? Okay. Ooh, and he didn't even have to touch them. All he had to do was be there. Oh... Wouldn't want to br fry her brain biochip. How is she going to get out of this? I'm sure she can, but like, is it going to be like um, the ending of another, another battle where like her entire body can shapeshift now? What makes you think that my fate is in your hands? Oh, oh my God. Like she's gone from being able to shake his hand and not being hacked because a, you know, another guy was helping her. To being able to just crush his hands. Oh my god. The zenith of things is our war of independence. You will not cancel it at your pleasure. Ah. Uh, yeah, what is this? What the hell is this? If I had to guess, I would assume that's Arthur. Like, Arthur himself. Or, you know, the, um... The artificial intelligence that is based on him, that one of the cores of Melchizedek might be inside of her now. And so it is like using the full power of Melchizedek to cancel out any hacking that might happen. Oh. I mean, this is such a good two page spread. I was about to say it might be a good contender for background, but. To be fair, I think this background works a lot better because it's so clean and clear and crisp. Whereas this, as beautiful as it is, as oh, as gorgeous as it is, the intentional blur here would not like it. It's already messing with my eyes. I already feel really weird looking at it because it's intentionally blurry and my eyes are trying to compensate by it to try and make it sharp. But there is nothing there to make sharp. So it wouldn't be a good background, but it is fantastic at like showing this gore without it being too gory and while keeping Alita's face on full display. Like this is one hell of a triumphant return. All right. All pain will cease. Also, that I think that's really cool for showing that he isn't a cyborg or if any part of him is cyborgified, like if any of him is mechanical, then at the very least it's on his hands. Like that was a flesh and blood hands. You really think guns are going to work now? It's not that I don't want to. It's that I can't. My finger won't pull the trigger. Ah, two can play at the hacking game. And once again, Alita jumps leaps and bounds beyond Zex. You gave up your lives to my will the instant you set your the foot on the ground beneath my feet. Oh my god. This blow will never reach me, never, for I am Trinidad, king of the cyber world, ruler. Wherever electrons flow through cords, none dare defy me. Your neural impulses belong to me. Bones, blood, muscle, I rule them all. 
Ah. Every breath and heartbeat is mine to control, and every movement must beseech my consent. It will stop, for it is I who keeps the world from chaos. Trinidad. Oh my god. I have never been more excited to see a punch land. All right. Let's see his old hero days. Hmm. Okay. Crane selected by the Gene Project. Fire string and Nitus. Oh, wait a minute. Was he the one who created the uh, the nano machines on Mercury? If you're watching this recording, then sure, I am surely groveling at your feet, perhaps even begging for your life. Huh? He's his ability to like his foresight is pretty amazing. Is he ma like? Is this how Embody got to where he is? Like, is this genuinely going to convince him? I would discover the extent to which livestock resist their own nature. Ah, uh, and even this. I, I love it. I love the idea of someone who is so smart that they can predict what someone is going to say, like, while they're doing a recording. But I especially love this, that in the past, he recorded all of this, and he's, like, he's not keeping his cool at all. Like, he knows he's gonna die. But yet, despite that, like, he, like, he knows his true nature. This isn't a case of a person who is super smart also being a hypocrite. It's like, no, from the very start, he knew he was gonna do this. Oh, I'm sure you see now this fight on Pluto is only arranged to test you. Oh my god! Oh my god, he's the second one, isn't he? Like, of the uh, the brain biochips that he has, one has to be himself. One, I think, is this uh, scientist. Because he did say, the, like, the chips he had are all... Were, wait, were they all? Hmm. Actually, no, because he has his own brain, right? So was it that all three chips were of the, uh, you know, people like Nova, where they were the uh, the irregulars, the um, do do do, yeah, the Gene Project scientists. Was it all three of them, or was it just two of them? And was the third his own brain? Because he does have a physical brain that the chips are in, so it might be all three of them. In that case, he might be the first one to take and implant my brain biochip into your own skull. Got it. Okay, definitely knew it. He's talking nonsense. You can't take him seriously. I don't want to die. You can be an Ubermensch, explore, unex discover unexplored vistas, accomplish feats unprecedented in all of human history. Right. If he does it, like, if you have to trust in him, he could betray you. But if it's just his brain biochip on your brain, then there's nothing else. Agam body, you will be the true ruler with dual powers of good and evil. You will rule the world the way you see fit, according to your own beliefs. Did he? Did she stop, or is is like is his perception so good that he sees her slow down? Is like yes, yes, this is it. It's done. Uh, oh, okay. Now here's the question: Did he do it or not? Like, did he really stop it, or did she intentionally stop it because he, like, she wanted to hit him with just the shockwave? Like, he want, she wanted to keep him alive. I'm sure I'm dying to wallop you, but how could we win with the zenith of things if you died? Am I right? Ah! One thing that I'm a bit worried about with the uh, live action Alita is that Alita, in it so far, has been very serious which i understand like as i said in a podcast that i don't know if it'll come out or not if it will it'll be on my channel but uh, I, I was talking with a friend about it and one thing i noted is that in all of the action like in all the trailer shots she's been very sort of serious or she's been lashing out she's she hasn't really been silly or like flirty or like this at all like this is the alita that i truly love the Alita who is so powerful that she's free to just be fun and like silly at times. Like the the perfectly free woman. And my theory is that the reason we didn't see those in the trailer is because the trailer is trying to front load the action. So as a result, like it would feel too strange if they like if they went for a like an emotional trailer. Like they really want to sell wide audiences on how cool Alita is, both as a person and as a franchise. So in the actual series, in the movies, I'm hoping that we get a lot of scenes like this and that the trailers are just kind of, you know, showing off the action side because that's what sells. Ah, uh, by the way, this tale, like, 
uh, it's here again, so I, I'll just keep on moving forward, but oh my god. The fact that she has a tail makes me so happy. What is the secret of Alita's power? Hmm, what will he see there? Like, I'm hoping it's something from the scrapyard. Or not the uh, the scrapyard, but from... Uh, I keep forgetting what it's called. But, you know, the scrap area between Tiferes and Ketheres. Like, I'm hoping that they did something that is kind of visible in her. To show, like, yeah, like, it is her power. Like, she is the one who built herself up. But they helped. Like, one thing I love about Alita is, again, the fact that she isn't fully independent. Like, she is a strong person. She is a person who is able to rely on herself, who, like, moves forward, who doesn't have to rely on others. But she does rely on others. Like, she doesn't have to rely on others, but she does. Her entire story has been very codependent on other people, and on the charity of others, and on the help of others. It's... It's a very almost shonen ideal of, like of true friendship of like being able to work with others to an extent because like you're stronger with others than you are alone so i'm really hoping we get to see something there hmm huh what is this swirl this here like now that we know she doesn't have a brain i assume that's the brain biochip there it's kind of flat but what's this Fata Morgana and her brain biochip have fused. Oh, okay, so that's the pointy thing here. Huh. She's able to wield its massive operative functions. In her chest, some kind of high energy void. Has the Jovian wormhole where Hector Corp been imported? And is it still running? Ah. Uh, yep, she is a karmic singularity. She has the, the processing power of the most powerful processor known to man. And she has the... She has a power source that is the most powerful power source. And that's why she came out of, um... Oh, I forgot its name already. <laughs> but yeah, that's why she came out of the Jovian's weapon. Because she stole its core. I'm so curious to see... Uh, I did notice that was Zeka, by the way. But before we look at that page... I am so curious to see if uh, Brain Alita comes back. And if she does, like, what will happen? I do think that because Alita has been shown to accept herself, like in all instances, she's willing to accept her past, whether she was like, no matter who she was in the past, she's willing to accept her because she loves herself. And like, not, not in a, not in a uh, <laughs> prideful way, but she loves herself in a very pure way. Like she's willing to accept all of her own flaws and weaknesses, her past, her mistakes and her past, you know, triumphs. So, I think that we honestly could have her like this entire embody thing could be foreshadowing. It could be that she takes this bio, this brain biochip, takes her brain, puts her brain into her, her own skull and then just sticks the chip in. And then from there, it's like, yeah, we're good. This is me. I am myself times two now, but it's all still me. And I'm willing to accept that. I think that'd be a really poetic like ending to the like the separate existences of the brain and the biochip Alita. All right, and Zeka's willing to follow her. A war of aggression. But yeah, she doesn't want that. She just wants independence. She doesn't want to actually fight back. Huh, how did he do that? Like, I get how Alita herself could have possibly done that, but it looked like he specifically did that to free Zex. Huh. And why, may I ask, should I take orders from a loser? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty clear now. Embody's on the ropes. There's no reason for anyone to follow him right now. And that's true. Ah, oh, it's not like you're overseeing a tournament anymore. Like, if he called off the tournament, if the tournament's not happening, there's no reason why they can't kill him. Like, fuck it. I mean, Alita doesn't want to kill him because she wants the tournament to continue. But if he's not going to allow it to happen, then there's no reason why they can't have their own private zots. Oh boy, what the hell is this? What is this fresh hell? Bonjour to each of you. I am Sh uh, Chief Gazingner Pis Pissarro Crier de Vivre. Or, oh, I can never pronounce that. I took French for many years, and I am absolutely awful at it. All right, yeah, so it was the Venusians and the uh, Jovians. Okay. Also, like, he was just allowed to come in. That's interesting. So, like, clearly, uh, Embody... Like, he blocked off everyone else except for presumably those who are already in the know that it was all rigged. 
right? Unlike Jupiter, will always promote free and open competition. Uh, whether or not that's a lie, though, I think that's a really cool distinction. That Jupiter, like, in addition to having their very, like, highly modified bodies, their very non-human-esque uh, cyborg bodies, they also have this very rigid idea of, like, we're going to rig it and we're going to design this so that we always win. Whereas the Venusians are genuinely, like of the idea that they want to promote free and open competition or like not free and open, but like rather their designs are also free and open. Like it's all very fleshy. I think that's really cool. Also, it blows my mind that French continued to exist into the future. Like for some reason, a lot of sci-fi series don't bring up French, which I think I'm super sensitive about because um, like because I learned French because, you know, Canada and all that. But apart from Star Trek The Next Generation, or, and I guess Star Trek in general, there are very few like sci-fi series I can think of that have brought up French as like, a language that still exists far into the future. I guess Cowboy Bebop. I'm not going to go down that route right now. Okay, they have a karate, like, a, a karate user as well. Hmm. Wait a minute. Was that uh, not the person who became a, uh, a Buddha, but... This is Omdefer, a Gazinner creature and the keystone of our Genome Kingdom team. Can you guess why we named him Man on Fire? Oh, that's why I remembered the face. It's it, like it's Zeka from the flashback, not the uh, not the other guy. Okay, huh? You no longer have legal ownership of your genes, so you really can't call them yours, huh? Oh boy, this is this is a big future worry. Superior Zeka DNA has been used to create numerous Biovuvra consumer products already. We've got Zeka beer, Zeka meat, Zeka clothes, a Zeka chair, the Zeka dog, a Zeka table. Oh boy, oh no. <laughs> this is hell. Like, there's something deeply disturbing about this. Like, not human stuff. As weird as it sounds, like, uh, I've heard about things like, you know, like Yonic beer or um, other products that are made with like byproducts of human beings, like not corpses or anything. But like, you know, like this is um, this is cheese made with bacteria that comes from a human gut or like this is clothing weaved from human hair. I've seen it with charms, actually, like um, supernatural charms, and whatnot. As weird as that is, I'm, I don't have a problem with that. I do have a problem with like human meat, but that's because in order to harvest it, you've got to kill a human. But even if it was lab grown, uh, if it was lab grown, I might be OK with it, but I probably wouldn't eat it. Maybe once, maybe just as a, hey, let's see how this is. Oh, boy, I don't like this. <laughs> or worse yet, oh, boy, I do like it. But this like uh, the idea of like not just human, but specifically like creating stuff based on one person really bothers me. Because if it's just human, I can live with that. It's just like, yeah, you know, this is this is the smell of human or this is the taste of human. Like it's it's worrying on a human scale, but but it doesn't bother me that much. I get, whereas if it's based on one person, that extremely bothers me. Like if I could drink beer that is based on Michael Jordan, that isn't like, you know, approved by him or like based upon his tastes. But it's like, no, this is we made this with the DNA of Michael Jordan infused the hops or something like I, I could not do that. The person, the personal aspect of it is what bothers me a lot, I guess. Like that deeply disturbs my psyche. Also, of all of these, the Zeka meat actually bothers me the least. I guess the Zeka beer bothers me the least. Second least is Zeka meat. Because with meat, I kind of understand it. But like a chair, why would you want a Zeka chair? Why would you want like a Zeka like intestine worm? Why would you want Zeka slippers? No, what is this? What is this? No, this is not okay. Uh... Oh, that's a really interesting thing to note. Like, you renounced your own genetic information. This entire time, like... Cyborg bodies have always been seen as just like, oh, yeah, you know, when your physical body starts dying, you replace the, f the fleshy bits with with cyborg parts. But Zeka didn't do that. Like, he renounced his old body in exchange for a cyborg body. Or, like, artificial body and a synthetic brain. So he gave up all that was truly him genetically. And so they're free to just take it. That's really interesting. Also, I love this idea of a flesh and blood Zeka pumped to the absolute limits versus a cyborg Zeka. Like, who would win? 
This is Jack Drombo risking life and limb to conduct a surprise exclusive interview to get the facts between behind the cancellation of the Zots. And all these people are still here. They didn't go home, so he has a captive art audience now. Wait a minute. How does that work? Like, oh, it's a filter. So regardless of how he actually looks, they're going to put on this filter so that he looks normal, right? Either that or actually, it might just be a picture. Like, they might not be filming. But it might just be, like... Hmm, one of the two. Because also, his face isn't moving. Like, it's not open or anything, so maybe. Huh. Oh, you must vow to honor two agreements in front of everyone here. If we win, you will recognize Tiferous and the Scrapyard as an independent country, and on your sacred honor, you will never renege on that vow. Okay. As long as Planet Karate is safe, it's fine by me. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Uh, he's really locked into a side, like, into a corner. Like, he can't say no to any of them now. Or else he's gonna look like a complete fool. Okay, so it has to be a filter. Yeah, definitely. I think that's so cool. Like, oh, wow. Like, it makes total sense. Like, of course. I imagine, even, it, like, right now, in the modern day, they can't quite do it, but I could definitely see, um... Like, using deepfakes technology, you know, the technology that allows you to, like, take uh, one person's face and paste it onto something else. I could see them doing that with celebrities, but not with, like, another celebrity, but with themselves. Like, take, uh, like, say, Tom Cruise all, like, um, where am I going with this? Like, take Tom Cruise, put him in all of his makeup, like, make him look perfect, then scan his face, and then whenever he goes on a, like, a interview show or whatever... You could then use a like artificial intelligence to take that old face, like that perfectly made up face, and modify his current face to know no matter how he looks, so that he looks more like that idealized version of himself. I could I could actually see that using modern deepfakes uh, technology. So I could absolutely see in like you know a couple hundred years uh, them being able to do this. Like it's ah, oh. you could tell Kishiro is truly a visionary. Swear upon my name, Agamem Body, the tenth Zot will go on, and the winning team will receive full sovereignty over both Tiferous and its subsidy, known as the Scrapyard. Ah, such a reasonable fellow! Mbadi! Mbadi! I don't know how to pronounce that in this way. Like, I've always been saying M as its own syllable, then Ba and then D. But I don't know how to say Mba as one thing. Like, even there, I'm still saying the M part of it. Also, I really like the shading here. It reminds me a little of, um, I recently read Ash and Victor, and it, this isn't like that at all. Like, this is definitely the modern, uh, Alita arts, but the, the shading shows that he's still got it. He can still do the harsh shading if he really wants to. Also, I love how over the top this is. Like, God, his public image is insane. All right, the Space Angels move on to the finals, so hopefully we can see the semifinals match, actually. Like... Uh, I don't know what the other team is, but the other one of the other teams is definitely the Venusians. So we'll get to, we'll either get to have a scene of them being hyped up as being amazing, or oh no 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 it's um it's Zeka's team right? So we're gonna get Zeka versus the Venusians. Okay, I'm so dumb. Why didn't I think about that? Ah, uh, the first living mammal to reach Earth's orbit, November third, ES one. Which yeah, Era Sputnik. Now that I know that. It makes so much sense. Also, I, I love that Alita, with her tail, decided to, hey, let's come over here and look at this dog statue. <laughs> like, I want to believe it's canon. I want to believe at some point she's kind of like left the Zot to go look at the statue and then came back. Yes, Genome Kingdom of Venus versus Space, Space Karate Forces. Right, right, right. Oh boy, I am so excited. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no one will be able to complain if they die while watching. Yeah, they've gone way too far. I I don't know if I would go to the Zot for this, especially considering how, like, how lethal it's been for the people in the crowd, but man, it would be very tempting. At the very least, like, I would want one person in my circle of friends to go. Like, if no one else was going, I would go. If someone else was going, I would say, like, hey, you know, record it, sure hope you don't die. <laughs> I, Jack Jarambo, will of course continue to broadcast the tournament from beginning to end for as long as I live. Ah, oh, God bless you, Jack Jarambo. Ah, oh, the penalty for disturbing my meditation is death a thousand times over. Ah. Oh, it's, um, 
oh, I forgot his name already. Um, Alita's former teacher, right? He finally managed to crawl his way back up here over like the course of days. To Zikro, that's it. It is the ultimate happiness to have the singular honor of licking your mighty feet again. Oh boy. This man. Ooh, my former student, Yoko von der Reiserkling. Yeah, this is some old ass news. It's been quite a while since that happened. <laughs> like, even that, that wasn't the most important thing that happened in that volume, let alone anything else. Hmm. Oh no, we've got Supernova here. Human society never ceases to fascinate. Ooh, okay. So maybe after the Zot, uh, he'll come back as a, like, the pinnacle of, um... I was gonna say the pinnacle of Panzerkunst, but I don't know if he can do that. Like, clearly Yoko has surpassed him, or rather, um, Alita has surpassed him, so... What else could he do? I assume it's going to involve some of his secret Panzerkunst abilities, though. Hmm. I, Agamembody, must request authorization to use the Sword of Damocles. Also, I do love that, again, Mbadi is the assistant chairman. Like, he's not the chairman, but the actual chairman is completely out of the loop. Um, I mean, I, I know the, um, the myth of the Sword of Damocles, or rather the parable of it. But what would it be in Elita terms? Like, I can't tell whether it's going to be a, a physical weapon or a hacking weapon. Hmm. It wasn't that laser that they used to, um, to destroy the railgun during the Den arc, was it? Or, no, that was something else connected to Melchizedek. If it was da Damocles, I would have remembered it. Ah, oh, that's so weird. Like, I, I assume there are probably machines like this in Japan. But it's so weird to think of a machine that pulls, puts out, like, takoyaki, uh, okinama, ah, yakisoba, there's taiyaki there, and then fries. Like, fries seems like such an outlier, but it makes sense, because all of these things are fried. Except for the rice balls, obviously. <laughs> but even taiyaki, like, a lot, of, a lot of people think of it as being, you know, a baked good, but it can be fried, right? I guess the tea is really the outlier there, but I mean, they have tea and coffee. That's just, that's a separate vending thing. <laughs> oh my god, these two are such dorks. They spent ten minutes doing this. Why? Why? Alita, will you marry me? What? Oh my gosh, but we're both girls. <laughs> oh boy. This is a good skit. Also, I, I don't know if I ship it, but if they're, like, of all the ships in Alita, I think this is a pretty alright one. Pretty alright. Honestly, I still think that Alita slash figure four is one of the best ships. Either that or maybe Alita's X. Like, that's not gonna happen, but I mean, like, in terms of just anything can happen, fanfic -y ships, I think that'd be pretty cool. They have a really neat dynamic. Ah, oh, she looks so cat-like now. I love it. I really love how many lines her new design has. Like, it honestly does remind me of, like, not a tiger in the, like, obvious sense, but sort of metaphorically like a tiger, like a cyborg tiger of sorts. Like, it's it's all the stripes everywhere and the strange patterning of it. Like, the fact that none of the shape, none of the uh, stripes flow that smoothly into one another. Like, all the ones here are all, like, those are all one thing. All of these are one thing. All of her chest ones are one thing. Like, her arms are different. Her tail is different. It's it's this crazy collage of different types of stripes. For whom is Planet Karate? For what purpose is the way of karate? I really hope that... Like, I, I don't want the Planet Karate stuff to go too far beyond the next few volumes. Like, I'm really hoping that they wrap it up during the Zots. Because I'm not that interested in it, to be perfectly honest. Like, it's cool in its own way, and I do love, like, the idea of cyborg martial arts. Like, it's all it's all pretty good stuff. But I'm really hoping they bring like his story and Zex's story not to a close, but I want their like their karate plotline to be brought to a relatively neat close so that when Alita goes on to whatever else could possibly happen in Last Order, that it'll be kind of fresh. God damn. He was really a jerk. Oh, wow. That is so cool. Some leftover scraps to raise future students. No, oh, they're not human. You're not allowed to do that. But, oh. Also, I love how, 
like at the very start, it was so crazy to think of that. Oh yeah, children aren't human. Like they put out squads to just kill off excess children, but now it's just like it's just a fact in this world, right? Electromagnetic karate prospered because its founder Tunpo taught street urchins first, right? But they've lost their way. They're not following the true nature of uh, electromagnetic karate, uh, right? Where you must present yourself as large and powerful. It is heresy to admit that each and every warrior used to be a child. Right? Oh, man. I really do like him. And I do think that, yeah. Like, there is a space for space karate on the planet of... Like, on the surface of the planet. So it's possible. It's possible that they can save these urchins. What do you stand for, Fist? What does karate stand for? Oh, who's got his hand on his shoulder? I'm thinking Zekka, but it could be one of his teammates. Make sure you become someone worthy of being reflected in those bright, shining eyes. Oh, that's such a cool idea. Show the whole world, Toji, your dream of planet karate realized. Oh, no, Fox Kitty. I would absolutely adopt it. Oh. I've been talking a lot with my friends about getting a cat, and it might happen eventually. If it does, if if it happens while I'm still reacting to Alita, I'll definitely put it up in a in one of my Alita reactions. Though at this rate, it's probably not going to happen anytime soon. Eh, in any case, I'm sure Mar Mars Chronicle is going to keep on going for quite a while, so at some point you will see my cat, and it will be a glorious day. Oh my god, the Tengu mask ship. That's crazy, I love it. All these different, like, galactic uh, karate forces are all here to support them because they've come this far already. This is awesome. This is so awesome. I, I genuinely think the Venusians will win and then we'll have the Alita versus the Venusians fights. But it would be so cool if the final fights had, like, none of the seeded teams in it. If it was just Space Karate versus Space Angels. Ah, over a hundred of them. Huh, of course, I'm not using any gimmicks. Huh, what did he do? Like, he didn't evaporate it, obviously. Oh, that's so obvious. Like, it's so fast that the heat of the friction melts down the glass and has it stick to his hands. Or no, it doesn't even melt. The glass molds into the shape of the hand before it shatters. That is insane. Ooh, I'm so excited to see who in the world is going to, like, show up. Or, like, who is Zeka going to allow on the team? I honestly could imagine that because of the guy he is, I could see him just saying, nah, fuck you. Like, my, the, my teammates called you and you didn't come. Just because we're winning, you want to come in? Nah, screw you guys. It's just going to be the two of us. <laughs> this is such a good gag. Any milk or sugar? Nope. This is the traditional tea ceremony. You don't get that. You get a giant bowl of matcha bigger than you are. Master butt kiss of how now karate. <laughs> the flawless kowtow of master butt kiss. Oh no. This is a true martial art. The how now kowtow. Oh no, what is this? Here, keep it. <laughs> that was also a fantastic setup for the gag. Okay, they all have to just fight each other. And whoever survives, oh boy. Still, I'm very worried at the state of karate in this universe. Like, martial artists just constantly die. It's crazy, like, especially with the killing of kids in, you know, in outer space. Like, I don't know, like... Is the next generation going to have any karate masters? It seems like all the good ones are being annihilated. Ah, oh, it's a karate war. Uh, of all these designs, my favorite has to be this guy who's poking out this guy's eyes. It's great. Oh, man. There are currently 180 million practitioners of karate in the universe, far more than any other martial arts. Okay, hmm. So T led to 2D, 2D led to Karate, the three major Okinawan schools, and the four major Japanese schools. Okay. 
spreads overseas. Okay, so the Okinawan schools moved on after the collapse of civilization due to the meteor impact. The overseas styles spread on. The main styles spread on. And then these ones broke down in their own ways. Right, right, right. Okay, so... Huh, so they're descended directly from the major Okinawan schools. Like, there's a bit of a breakdown here, but for the most part, it's all fine. Whereas all the others, like, no one has any idea where any of these could have come from. Huh, that's really cool. They teach popular karate. I could see that, though. Like, it's not traditional, but because you're allowed to bring in whatever you want, you can get some, like, real crazy styles out of it. Ah! Rider Karate Grasshopper! Uh, any series that puts in a Kamen Rider reference is a good series. Nuclear Core Karate Pluto, Tesla Karate Volts. Uh, I hope this guy makes it in. I want to see some Rider Karate Grasshopper in there. Ah, uh, Anti Tank Karate, Shochuten, uh, Shochusen Punch, uh, Karate Quadra Punch, blah 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 blah. blah. Let's see. Curve karate. There's octo karate. Oh my gosh. What we scholars call Uma. Unidentified martial artists. <laughs> that's such a silly way to twist the acronym, but I love it. Okay, so that's why these are all like mythical. Oh my god, I love it. I'm really interested in this vampire karate, because we saw a vampire that knows karate, so... Like, is that completely different? I mean, I guess it has to be. It ha the, this has to be based on the idea of a vampire committing, you know, using karate moves as opposed to a real vampire, because we saw the real vampires already. <laughs> Most are but poor imitations. I love the contrast between, like, the craziness of all these different karate masters all fighting and how calm it is to see this, uh, this tea ceremony. This is the first time I've been thanked for striking someone down. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, I didn't consider that, actually. Yeah, like, they both have that feeling of, yeah, we weren't able to save children. That is something they can bond over. I lacked the heart to reach out and respond to their pleas. Using my skills to save lives, that didn't even occur to me. Ah, oh, right. They have body. He had body, he had technique, but without a heart, there's no point to power. The heart drives skill and technique. Ah, oh, I, I think she's really like this is really digging at her like she's she really gets it. Next time we'll be able to fight without holding back. Ah, uh, face 74, the samurai and the cats. All right. Uh, OK, yeah, this is the end. This is also the final uh, part of the uh, of the um omnibus so i shouldn't have to worry about accidentally reading over but i've been super swept up in this and did i mention how much i love alita's tale it's it's great he's a wanted man serial sexual assault and murder we should execute him to spare the honor of the karate world oh boy damn he is good like i don't like him as a like as a person but i've got to agree he's got technique that's for sure Oh, that's so cool! Like, it's a super cyborg version of the, um, of the idea of a karate master who uses, like, poison fingertips or poison nails. Oh, that's so smart! I love him! Okay. Discovered a most ferocious rat wreaking havoc in his house. Katsugan had a cat, but she was wounded in battle. So the samurai brought in skilled mousers from the neighborhood. Ah. Oh. This traditional Japanese style looks so interesting, like, being done by Kishiro. Like, it's not as thin and, like, how do I put this? It does fit the style, but something about it is too, like, on model. A lot of the, like, super old, um, like, Japanese art that I've seen, like, I don't remember the exact term for it. That's why I'm kind of dancing around it. But I've, I've been reading a lot of it. Or, like, I've been looking at a lot of it recently because One Piece is doing a uh, an arc kind of based around that kind of arts. Uh, it's usually, like, the line work is usually a bit thinner and it's a bit more, like, off-model, a bit more wispy and strange looking. Whereas, like, Kishiro has a very strong ideal of, like, what each thing is supposed to look like. And so each of these are very distinct. 
Like the way this art, this leg is drawn is pretty distinct, even if it's being intentionally kind of, you know, strange in the same way. Like it's still very on model or like this, this rat, especially like in an actual um, Japanese like period painting. I imagine this would be a lot more like elongated and the snout would be very strange. Oh, boy, this is a good metaphor. Oh, no, ah, this poor cat. This is one hell of a mouse. Next up was large tiger cats. Joshigan. Huh. Hmm. Sadly, the rat took him down too. Yeah, it's a tough rat, that's for sure. Why antagonize when you can harmonize? I use my mind. <laughs> she just automatically knows at this point where the metaphor is going. She was a scatterbrained calico. Okay. Hmm. And like, she's also very fat. That doesn't really pin to anyone I could think of right now. Okay. The rat shook with fear at the sight of this cat. But the rat emerged defenseless and was captured and eaten. Then that night, the other cats asked where they, where they had gone wrong. The calico pointed out each of their shortcomings. Hmm. What, what I pass on to you is not the ultimate answer. Long ago, there lived a cat near my home who was by far my superior. The cat of all cats is the Cheshire cat. What? Wait, what? Yeah. Now it's Alice in Wonderland. What is happening? Huh. Maybe it was Schrodinger's cats? No, this metaphor was so good. It was so good. It was the ultimate cat lover's uh, martial arts metaphor. Though, I do agree, actually. That is pretty zen. <laughs> like, it's not a cone. It's not like a zen cone in the sense that, like, it doesn't end with a with an answer that is very difficult to understand, but it's more like just it kind of meanders off. I guess you could see it as a Cohen, actually. Like, if you didn't have any frame of reference for, like, this mysterious, like, disappearing cat, if it's just like, oh, there is a superior, and it's... And then that final answer is just a complete, like, oh, well, it, I guess it doesn't matter. Like, this part doesn't teach anything. Like, that's the part of the Cohen that I imagine would, like, stick in your throat and force you to think about it over and over again until you seek enlightenment. I don't know if the samurai and the cat even applies to us anymore. If you're interested, you can learn more about it on the internet. I'm not going to do it right now, but I will. Uh, let me save this page, actually. Because I am very interested, but I, I feel like if I were to... Alright, let's save it to my uh, photo folder. If I were to look it up right now, I don't think it'd be very interesting. So, we'll do it later. Or I'll do it later. Oh no, it's still... There we are. You know, I think part of that is genuinely just to relax her. Like, she drank some tea that she doesn't fully like, she was able to talk to someone else, she heard a story. Like, I think that the purpose of this, more so than actually teaching her anything, was just to, like, to calm her down. Yeah, he is insanely strong. I'm wondering if he's going to be a human, like, as opposed to being a cyborg martial artist. Because he is very small. Though the face seems very, uh, cyborg. All right, that's also really interesting that he passed up Zeka to fight Toji. Seed of mass carnage, the, resi the result of unbridled selfishness. This is a microcosm of our worlds. This is true, like, this entire thing started by saying that, yeah, karate is super, like, broken up. It's full of a bunch of different schools all fighting one another. And this is a perfect way to show exactly that. Like, yeah, they're fighting each other quite literally here. Like, they're, they're not able to see peace like there's no way that they can truly work together all right so it's just that ideal that ideal alone is what gets him to finally agree all right so we've got the uh the rapist oh boy actually never mind he's not going to be on the team elite is going to kill him right now my rape strike hit but my finger is so cold my mind and body can move freely. I'm confident no one can defeat me, but I feel as if I'm falling from a great height. So yeah, like, she's got unlimited power, and she has unlimited processing power, but something about her, like, she doesn't have, she doesn't have a floor beneath her feet right now. She doesn't have anything grounding her. And because of that, like, she's still adrift. She's still trying to figure out what it is that she needs to do. Hmm. Okay, what a way to end this. Oh boy, more of these omake. <laughs> <laughs> okay uh the first few omake didn't really get me but this is a fantastic joke like this is great you could put in literally anything here 
okay, new characters, new costumes made by you. And yeah, I do accept that. Like, there's no way you'd be able to, as a fan, keep the copyright for your characters, especially considering how deeply he's integrated a lot of these characters. Ah, man, that Jovian cat is truly the greatest design. Oh, and that makes so much sense that, like, I see most of the forms of 609 may, may have been uh, fan designs. Like, they're so cool. Also, I really appreciate the breadth of different types of designs he's willing to accept. Like, not just in terms of the actual design, but in terms of, like, the artistic skill of the person who drew them. Okay, so we're getting Junks the Space Rovers Part 2. All right. I... I mean, when we saw that it was part one, I was quite excited. Like, this is this is some solid stuff. Again, as always, I'll try to put a, th uh, a timestamp at the bottom. And I don't know why I keep saying I'm going to do that, because it doesn't help you. Like, either I did or I didn't. <laughs> You're here already. <laughs> Anyways. Pirates, the hidden force driving to today's galactic economy. Okay. Right, right, they didn't have the pirate IDs. So they've got to register and be real pirates now. But why? Like, how does this work? Is it like, is it that because pirates steal, it's like it keeps inflation from getting higher because like there's a certain amount of stuff that is just always lost? Hmm. Pirate ID. Nope, it's a real ID. Yep. Genuine. Thanks to credit, we're fully equipped. Hmm. <laughs> Okay, they have enough food for six months. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. This seems like a bad idea. Yeah, if they can get more than 80 million right now in their first mission, they can just pay it back and they're done. Okay. And so... Okay, so it's it's basically just a game of chance at this point. Or I assume once they get there, they'll find some clue that will allow them to narrow down the number of uh, trash containers they have to check. What? Okay. So, yeah, definitely not 80 million. But I assume, like, it's like a tax then. Like, if pirates come, they are they pay an agreed-upon tax, and in exchange, they get to keep the rest. Oh, yeah, they're just collection agents then. There's no need for pirates. Or rather, like, there's a need for pirates, but they're not space pirates as you assume they are. That's such a cool idea. I love it. Yeah, like, this is such a cynical view of what it would be to be a pirate in the future. And yeah, did you want to become robbers and murderers? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're taking it too far. You're breaking all the rules. We're not afraid of a bunch of pirates in bed with a man. Yes, they're doing it. They're going to be real legit pirates. Oh, this is so cool. So... At some points, they were legitimate space pirates, is what, I'm, it, is what it seems like. Also, I really like that he's just called Mr. Scary. That's, that's a fantastic name. Yeah. So, what happened to change them from being pirates to being, like, to having this agreement? Okay. Mm, I could definitely understand that. Like, even outlaws need rules. Like, if it's all just infighting chaos, then there's, like... Being a pirate would just be hell, right? Okay, a fireboard lap across the planets. Okay, and this is almost certainly rigged. There's no way this isn't rigged, right? Hmm. By the way, I love all the graffiti so far in the series. Like, this really stood out to me, but everything else is great. Like, it really does give the series this very, like, old-school used, used future feel to it. Even more so than a lot of the scrapyard in Alita. Ooh. Right, you're not using gyros or electric electronic controls. You're just using your senses. Come on. This is also so insanely metal. I love it. Fire spraying from our board, so this is what they mean by atmospheric friction. Ah. And yeah, there must be such a difference for, between, like, seeing a planet on TV and actually being, like, near Earth orbit. Like, skating, like, yeah, boarding on, like, the, uh, on the event horizon between, like, where the gravity will start to draw you in and where it won't. This is insanity. And the ionized atmosphere will make communication impossible, so all they can do is hope and wait for him to survive. 
the Twilight Tube. Hmm. So I assume it's like it's a vortex where like the change in pressure between like the air heated up by the sun and the cool air on the night side like creates a vortex that you can use to like blast through. Ah, oh, how is he gonna get out? How is he doing that? How did he pull that off? He's controlling the board. What in the world? Oh, jeez. Yeah, we're just going on about why we need rules. Hmm. So all he has to do is dodge, though. Method air kick. God damn. Ooh, I could get the hang of risking my life for kicks. This is so cool. Yep, they got all the diamonds. Or no? Did we mistake number six for number nine for number six? Oh no. Oh no. They screwed up. They're now 80 million in debts. And the entire pirate guild is their enemy now. Oh, that's so good though. I love it. I absolutely love it. <laughs> Alright, so that was Battle Angel Alita. The entire volume four omnibus, but specifically volume twelve. Wow, 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 wow. This was like, after the previous few volumes of pure suffering, this was finally a breath of relief. This was a feeling of just sheer, oh man, like, Alita's back. She's more powerful than ever. She's more broken than ever. And, like, now Mbadi is in a position where he can't renounce the Zot. Like, they have to just go forward with it. The the actual, like, the possibility of Tiferas and the, um, and the Surface being their own commonwealth, it's been, it's closer than it's ever been to being a reality. And if that happens, oh boy. Like, and if Alita's doing it, I definitely believe in her. The only spanner in the works I can think of right now, I mean, apart from, like, any secret assassins or anything, the one big, like, thing that I think could stop this is the brain. Like, if... Uh, if Nova manages to take his two brain biochips that are in sequence and plug it into the Alita brain, I think maybe he'll have enough karmic potential to like to warp the world around his own like his own story. Like he might be able to find some one in a million chance to stop this from happening. In that case, uh, in that case, I could see like Alita not managing to win the Zots. But that's it. Apart from that, I feel like 100% she's going to win. And whatever happens after that, I don't know. Like, the Zot arc has been such a big part of Alita, or of Last Order. But we have a lot more to go, so... All I can say is, I'm very excited to see what happens next. Can't wait until next week. But for now, this was Thermite, this was Alita. Bye for now. Nya nya.